telephone company repairman. One afternoon, I was sent out to do a little rescue job. A telephone pole doesn't make a very good landing field for a model airplane. their names. One was named Pete Morrison, lived nearby. The other boy was Joe White, he lived down the block. But I couldn't get tough with the boys. I knew they hadn't done it on purpose. I told them they'd have to be more careful next time though. Telephone lines are a mighty important part of our town's communication system. I asked the boys if they knew what communication meant. Joe said he guessed it meant people talking to each other. That was right in a way, but communications is much more important than just talking. When you crook your finger at somebody, that means, come here. That's a kind of communication too, just like talking. It transfers an idea. That's what communication means. Transferring an idea. Do you know what would happen if all our communication suddenly stopped working? I asked the boys that. Why, for one thing, I said, there wouldn't be any programs on the radio. No more serials or adventure stories. No more funnies, either. Radio and newspapers are kinds of communication, too. But communication is a lot more important than serials and funny papers. Suppose you became sick all of a sudden and your mother decided to call the doctor. If the phone was out of order, it might be hours before he could be reached and that could be serious. Without communications, our town wouldn't get along well at all. But we could still talk to each other, Pete said. Pete was right. Talking together face to face is a form of communication. That's the simplest kind we have. But when we aren't that close together, when we're so far apart that we can't even shout to each other, then we need another kind of communication. I showed Pete and Joe what I meant. Even when you're several blocks apart, you can still talk together. Over a telephone wire. We might say the wire ties you together. Communications tie everybody in our whole community together like that. The postman carrying the mail also helps connect everybody in our community. Our community is tied together by many different lines of communication. While I was talking to the boys, I had an idea. We played a game of make-believe. We pretended a roll of tape was Pete's house, and another roll was Joe's house. An insulator was a church. It even had a steeple. Joe's pocket knife was a butcher shop. And a notebook was the boys' school. I put a wire between Joe's house and Pete's. There was a telephone connection at Pete's house and the connection at Joe's house. The telephone wire tied the boys' houses together. In the same way, we connected the boys' houses with the butcher shop. and with the school. 
But that was only one way in which these places are tied together. We can send letters between them too, you know. So I borrowed some writing paper from the school. We pretended the pieces of paper were letters. As the boys knew, a letter could be sent from Pete's house to Joe's. The butcher shop could send a bill to Joe's house. Mail could be sent between all these places. But what about the church Pete wanted to know? I said, sure. We can telephone or send mail to the church too. But there's another way a church can communicate with us, isn't there? The boys couldn't guess how. They hadn't thought of the church bells. The bells say, come to church, come to church. I explain that you hear certain kinds of communication. What does the alarm clock say? It says, get up, time to go to work. What does a factory whistle say? It says, everybody quit work, time to go home. What does the siren on the fire truck say? It says, get out of the way, there's a fire. But I explained, there are also kinds of communication that you see instead of hear. When a policeman raises his hand, what does his signal mean? That's right, it tells the people in the cars to stop or go. Even flashes of light and code can communicate ideas. Signs are also signals. Some signs don't even need words, like this one. Other signs come right out and say it. They give a warning to keep people from getting hurt. People read newspapers that tell the latest happenings. They receive letters that carry messages from friends. People go to the movies to see and hear a story. I explained to Pete and Joe that our town works better because it's tied together by communications. But I said, communications also tie us to other towns. We played make-believe again, pretended a rock was a big city far away. When I asked the boys what kind of communication tied us to the city, Pete thought of one right away. Mail, he said. Then Joe thought of another kind of communication. Telephone long distance. I connected our town and the city with a long distance wire. After they leave our town, I said, telephone wires run along the highway and across the fields and over the rivers. All the way to the city. And in the city, there are telephone operators and switchboards which make it possible for us to talk with people in almost every country in the world. But, I said, there are other long-distance communications besides the telephone. Radio doesn't even need wires. In split seconds through the air, it brings voices from abroad and makes us neighbors of people, half a world away. We have television, too, so that we can see as well as hear events happening far away. You see, communication ties us to everyone, everywhere. There are simple kinds like talking together and complicated kinds like television. But simple or complicated, all are important. Well, I had to go about then, but before I left, Pete told me he had an idea. He said that he and Joe would try to find out just how many different kinds of communication they could find in their neighborhood. Say, I'll bet they had fun. How would you like to try that idea?